This was a B class. Lindy Sue, we started with the shim sham. We did the shim sham today. So the first step we did was foot drags. Um, and I talked about getting down into the floor on those foot drags. Um, making sure your, your knees are bent on both. Uh, and then pulling them back um, after that. So we did a single, single double starting on the right side three times. And then we did a break, either the simple one or the toba, toba break. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, pushing tonight. Well, first we did swing outs. So if your swing outs feel less than perfect, um, something to work on, either a private lesson with Jen or maybe just working with somebody who seems like they're pretty solid for swing outs. But then we moved on from swing outs and we did sugar pushes tonight. And sugar push looks like this. So we did a one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, five, da, 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 da. So first we talked about just the feeling of a sugar push which is that the leads are moving back, the follows are coming in. As the leads stop, the follows go a little further, squish in, our frames connect, and then we <clears throat> send the partner, our partner, our follow back out. Um, we talked about how the feeling of the sugar push is more important than worrying about where your feet are at any one time. But we did show you the specific footwork that in an ideal world works super well for sugar pushes. Um, so that footwork looks like this. We've got step, step, trip, Full step, trip, full step. We're redirecting on the count four, three and four, five and six. Let's show that footwork. Um, so I'm leaving, of course, Jen's fall and look like this. Step, step, trip, full step, trip, full step. One, two, three and four, five and six. One, two, three and four, five and six. Um, sure. Mm -hmm. Yep, so we've got this. A one, two, three, and four, five, and six. One, five, da, 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 da. <clears throat> so let's see, a couple of little things to think about. One is like getting a little lazy with your sugar pushes. Some people were technically doing it right, but it didn't feel amazing because they were maybe like a little too tense or a little too rushed in it. So really take your time with it. Kind of make you feel lazy like you're worried about being late, but just let it be a little bit late feeling almost so that you can really take your time and it feels super nice. Also, your frame can be pretty relaxed until you're doing that real squish moment. So other than that, it can be kind of relaxed, relaxed, a little bit of tension and it's relaxed again. So you can kind of feel that change. Leads, make sure you, yeah, this thing, the hands. So, so yeah. you show close. Yeah, do you want to talk about it? I was just gonna say it's a, a, a a dynamic hand position so that it can be out here, you know, like this, stretched. when we're stretched and when we're compressed, follows knuckles or whatever, whatever part of your hand squishing in towards mm -hmm. your partner. Boom. Yeah. Mm, just like that. Feels good. Um, a couple other things are just lead setting themselves up. So at the beginning of a sugar push, if you want your follow to come forward, you got to have this stretch just like in a swing out. A boom, ba, and I have to set that up again at the end of the swing out by not rushing my partner towards them. We won't be there. I want to stay away if I want to do a second swing out or something that asks Jen to come forward. I want to make sure that I'm far enough away to make that happen. Those were the main points, yeah. I think. You guys did a great job. We're going to use those sugar pushes probably next week in, in a little sequence. So. Yeah. Good job, you guys.